everybody, this is Perch. What's customer matching? Well, it's one of those things that, in many cases, comic book publishers and, and people who produce books aren't terribly good at it. Put very simply, it's saying, if somebody likes this property, or this genre, or this type of book, or whatever it happens to be, then they'll probably like this other book. What's curious to me is that a lot of creators, when they're doing their pitch, or when I talk to them at shows, or... I'm saying, oh, yeah, you've got a book. Great. You've got a deal. What's it, what's it about? What's it going to be like? They often go for very strange comparisons that don't actually have anything to do with their book. In many cases, I think they want the book to sound important. So they'll say, well, we're going to do kind of a Frank Miller vibe from Daredevil, but we're going to mix it a little bit with a, you know, an old school uh, you know, Batman from the 70s, but it's going to have a contemporary flair. It's like, all right, that, none of those things make sense altogether. That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. You need to drill in more, not, not to something you like or something you feel, but to something that actually resembles the book you're reading. Or more importantly, what people who like other books will see in your book. Now, shop retailers often get pretty good at this. They can pick out kind of what people gravitate toward, and they can recommend books that are, that are similar in tone. Um, just because somebody likes Saga doesn't necessarily mean they won't like, say, Wicked the Divine. They're very different genres, very, very different books in terms of what they bring to the table. But uh, we have found in the shops that people who buy one tend to buy the other. You make those matches in your mind, you make those matches in your shop, and it tends to be an easier way to connect customers with books they don't know. Because here's the dirty truth of comics. Chances are, there's a great number of amazing comics that you would absolutely love, but you do not know they exist. They could be from any era, from the 60s on up. They could be from any publisher, big or small. But it's almost guaranteed there's some amazing books out there you don't, you don't know. And where comics, the industry, is kind of falling short on its customers is they don't do a good job of matching things up. The best they can kind of get to is, well, Jim Lee did this book, and now Jim Lee's doing another book. If you like Jim Lee, you will want to get this new book. And that's fine. Some people do buy books for the creators, but increasingly, that's, that's not what's going on, either for the writer or the artist. You'll hear a lot of this on Twitter or on Facebook, but in real life, very few people say, put me on everything Brian Michael Bendis does. Put me on everything Tom King does. Hey, is Scott Lobdell writing this book? I always buy Scott Lobdell, whatever he does, just put me on it. Are there people like that? Absolutely. Of course there are. But they are the definite minority of comic buyers. Most comic buyers do not follow creators like that. And if they do, it's artists far more than writers. There was a time when somebody would go wherever Todd McFarlane went. But in a, then again, that's kind of a red herring. The really super popular artists get attention, and people will follow them from book to book. But over time, that's not that's not how it usually plays out. People tend to gravitate more toward tone, style, and kind of characters and dynamics of books they're interested in. If somebody likes kind of a fantasy type book, you wouldn't recommend that they pick up Iron Man. By the way, as a complete aside, if you're a comic editor or a creator and you like fantasy books, you, you wouldn't or shouldn't go on Iron Man and suddenly try and turn it into the book you particularly like. That's a, that's a bad idea. That's a good way to lose the customers for yourself and the book. But anyway, customer matching to, to books is really important. It's especially important to a comic shop if you want to stay alive. It's, it's called reading your audience. It's called you know basically just expanding the bubble of what the available products are that you can sell to people. It's an important deal. Uh, but where I find things fall very short is at the publisher level. This is an area where, I, I, you know, certainly the big two could be doing a much better job. But same thing with the indies. In fact, in many cases, it's more dire for the indies to get good at this. They're, they struggle. Indies do not have the built-in benefit of having billion-dollar movies on the screen or 40 years worth of legacy products. Uh, and at the end of the day, Marvel can roll out a Spider-Man book, and they don't really need to do much about it. People know who Spider-Man is. Spider-Man's existed for a long time. People are going to go to that book and buy it. What, uh, what the indies, though, they don't have that brand recognition. They've got to figure out how to get people into things. And what's very confusing is, is they rarely do it. In the solicitations or on the website, I rarely see things like, if you like this, 
this, you know, these kinds of things, you will like this book. What's puzzling is that you see Amazon Prime, you see Netflix, and you see HBO Max, all the streaming services for movies and, and TV shows are absolutely doing this. In fact, they're paying quite a bit. They're investing into AI and different algorithms to basically get very precise of, you know, you are a 79% match. You are a 98% match. I mean, now some might argue Netflix's, uh, you know, results that they spit out are terrible, but that's a, that's a different problem. Why can't comics do this? In many cases, it would be much easier for comics. They have a more finite set of, of books and properties to deal with, but they also have more data. They have sales data. They have trends. They do know kind of what goes to what. And so if you're an indie, you should be able to say, if you are a fan of the Kurt Busiak run of the Avengers in, say, 98, then this book is going to deliver that kind of feel to you. Now, they, should, they need to be honest. You know, if you're promoting and marketing something like that, and somebody picks it up, and it's like, all right, this has nothing to do with anything that you're talking about. That's a, that's a different problem. But customer matching, and, and, and I'm telling you this for if you're an indie comic creator, if you're somebody who's trying to, to make it big, but uh, you know, you've got your new project out, you know, definitely, definitely you've got to do this. Uh, f- whether Even if you're doing a web comic, whatever it happens to be, help your customers out. Remember, your customers largely do not know you exist. You can certainly just go on to social media and start spamming everybody with, hey, I've got a book. Please go check it out. Here's some art. I, but, you know, by all means, do that. But a, a more successful long-term strategy for you is figure out what your book is like tonally. Ask your friends. Get people to read your comics. Say, hey, what does this remind you of? Find some people who've read a lot of comics and go to them. No, I'm not volunteering for the job, but I am happy to do this for anyone. Um, go to some people and say, hey, what does my book remind you of? Then be prepared to get an answer you may not like or, or, or thought would have coming. Maybe somebody's like, yeah, this book totally reminds me of, uh, you know, Legion of Superheroes from the early 80s. And you may have never even read that book and, and wondering what the hell this person's talking about. What you're really hoping for was somebody would say, you know, Spawn, number one. I, that, that's fine. That happens. But listen to what people are telling you in terms of what your book reminds them of. And then when you go onto social media or you go onto your uh, your website or whatever happens to be, push that kind of stuff. Because search results, people will go searching for content they know. And if you can link in and attach to that, then you, you basically, like a parasite, that's not the right analogy to use, but like, a, like an attachment, you'll start to bring people who are interested in one thing over to your project. This is going to be one of the best ways to get a built-in audience, to start getting people interested in your stuff. Otherwise... You're competing in just a sea of, of kind of random noise. You're hoping people like you because you're a, you're a nice woman or a nice man, uh, not, not because the, you know, the content actually reminds them of something they want to buy. It's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a very easy thing to do. If you don't have practice, it may be tough. But if you are a small publisher, absolutely start making some matching for people. Go you know, match up your customers your potential customers with some people who are already interested in a particular project, and you're going to have a much higher success of getting people pulled over to you. This is going to help. It is amazing to me how many crowdfunding campaigns I see where there's no attempt made at basically saying if you, and and, and by the way, you got to be specific, not if you like action, if you like comic books from yesteryear, what are you even talking about? And by the way, don't use yesteryear in your, unless you're Unless you're hawking some kind of steampunk Western fantasy book, don't don't use yesteryear for anything. <laughs> but uh, it, I go to a lot of crowdfunding pages, and it's you know unknown people trying to get their property going. They've got some nice art, good story. I mean, it looks looks like a decent project, but they don't do the obvious thing, which is basically tag and put in the description what this book is like. Assume for the moment nobody knows your project exists, which was hard because you've been working hard on it. But the reality is nobody does know your book exists. Find some people who are already interested in something that your book is like and, and you know, sidle in. You know, to get, get attached to that so you start pulling that audience. It's, it's an obvious one. And you'd be amazed how many people use search results in their browser and go looking for things they like. And if you can start to tag and connect into that stuff, then suddenly you're going to be brought up in the same results and people are going to check you out. 
that's a great way to find people you didn't know were out there. And it's a great way for people to find you when they didn't know you were out there. It's an easy thing to do. I just, I, I highly recommend take the time, figure out what your book is like, do it honestly, be specific. And I mean, it, it, especially if you've got like a really powerful run, if, if it's something like, uh, you know, if you, for some reason have made a book that has the same feeling, the same vibe as the original secret war, uh, put that in there. This, this book will, you know, fans of secret wars by Jim shooter, uh, will, and Mike Zeck will like this book. It's going to remind you of that comic. I mean, just, just, just make it really easy for them when it comes to marketing. If you're unknown, go dumb. And what I mean by dumb is go obvious, you know, assume that, that you've got 10 seconds of somebody's time, spell it out for them. Just do the best you can to, to really lay out the story. Uh, don't overthink marketing. Lots of people do. And, and you got to understand your audience is coming from zero. It's hard to kind of put your head in that, you know, in that space because you've been working on your book, you know, your project intimately, but other people are coming from nothing. So you got to help connect the dots for them. And many times that's very, very, very practical, very, very obvious work you need to do. Anyway, um, your mileage may vary, but I, I highly recommend it. It's an easy thing to do. It won't take you much time and, and you will see positive results if you can help connect up people that way. That's, it's, it's a, it's one of the easiest things you can do to generate some results. Anyway, you have any questions? Hey, leave it in the comments below. Um, you can get in touch with me in the description of this video. All the different links are there. Go nuts. <laughs> but most importantly, thanks for listening.